Thanks to Monday.com for sponsoring this video. Be sure to stay tuned for a chance to win a brand new iPhone SE. This isn't going to be a straight versus. If we're gonna compare displays and cameras, obviously the iPhone 11 Pro would win. But separating these two phones is either six or $700, depending if you go for the Pro or the Pro Max. And the purpose of this video is to decide if that $700 difference is worth it. So lining these two phones up side by side and going just off a spec sheet, of, of course, it's a demolition in favor of the iPhone 11 Pro and Pro Max. You're getting much more phone. But again, to harken back to that intro, at a six to $700 price difference, that's a lot of money. And when you break down what you get for that, the difference might not be as big as you think. So let's start with, I think, why the reason most people are buying smartphones now, the camera. So if you take the biggest price variance between these two phones, between the entry-level iPhone SE and the most expensive iPhone 11 Pro Max, you're at over a thousand dollars difference. And if you're looking to spend that amount of money, you're still getting the same cameras you have on any of the iPhone 11 Pro models. When you look at those three lenses, how are they gonna compare to the one on the back of the iPhone SE? So we want to eliminate kind of inherent bias here. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you images side by side, and at least initially not tell you which phone took which picture and see if you can figure it out. So the first shot is obviously the rear camera and it's the wide angle you would have on both. So take a look at things here like color, detail you can see, how blacks are represented and how those colors pop or don't pop. So here's the front facing camera. Take a look at certain details, how colors pop or don't pop. Same thing also applies to portrait mode, how that looks with my face, how the bokeh effect looks, how the cutout of my hair and ears are doing. Those are all things you can look at and try to guess again, and you can let us know in the comments which one you think is the iPhone SE and which one is the iPhone 11 Pro. All right, and then for the last blind test, here is video. Take a look at things like dynamic range, stability. We can't really talk too much about frame rates here uh, for the blind test, but how overall the video looks to your eye. So be honest with me in the comments, how many did you get right? And the point of sort of doing that blind was to show how good and capable the iPhone SE camera really is. When you factor in kind of the perhaps outdated camera sensor, both Apple's really modern processor and what they're doing on device, you end up getting really good looking images from a camera sensor that on paper has no business producing that quality of shots. But that's obviously not the whole camera story, right? You only have one rear facing camera with the iPhone SE. If you flip on over to the Pro and the Pro Max, got two more. You've got an ultra wide sensor there and you also have the telephoto in addition to other things like night mode, for example, the ability to take portrait shots of not just faces, take it of things. You have a lot more flexibility with what you get with the Pro and the Pro Max versus the SE. For me, back when the world was normal place, I used the telephoto quite a bit. I was at kids' baseball games and soccer games. I ought to be able to zoom in with higher quality and resolution to have those shots. Although, albeit I very rarely ever use the ultra wide sensor. So I probably could have lived with a pretty decent digital zoom. And the iPhone SE is no slouch and you can still shoot 4K 60. Now you do miss out on the smart HDR on video at 4K 60 like you'll get on the iPhone 11 Pro and Pro Max. But at 1080, you get the option of frame rate variability. You can shoot 60 or even 120 or 240. <laughs> And I think looking now at these two phones, so nine months-ish since the iPhone 11 Pro came out and about a month since the iPhone SE, which one you should buy if you're buying a phone right now should be clear. Either get the iPhone SE or wait to see what the iPhone 12 Pro is going to be. You've waited this long. If you're willing to spend $1,000, we talked about this in a previous video, if you're gonna spend that top tier price you should at least get those top tier specs. And while right now in this world, that still is a top tier phone, it won't be in a few months time, three to four months. 
you might as well wait to see what the iPhone 12 Pro is going to do if you have the ability to do so. And Apple typically is discounted to previous generation phones when their new flagships come out. So even if you have your heart set on that iPhone 11 Pro or that green 11 Pro Max, you'll still be able to get that brand new phone September or October for probably a few hundred bucks off when Apple inevitably slashes the price. So performance is kind of an interesting category. Uh, Apple made the choice to include the current top gen processor in both phones. So both of these have the A13 processor with the second generation neural net. These are really powerful phones of equal process. Now there's been some discussion whether or not it's underclocked or not on the iPhone SE that has not been confirmed. Where you might see differences though is in app management. The Pro has an extra gig with four gigs of RAM, whereas the SE has three. In everyday tasks though, you will be hard pressed to notice any difference at all. So things like multitasking is no problem. Playing top tier games will be no issue. Performance wise, the, the delta between these two phones is so small and any difference you can detect is probably you're just assuming the Pro is gonna be better and it may not actually be there, kind of a placebo effect. I was really impressed with performance on the iPhone SE. An area that I wasn't that impressed with though was battery life. Where I think Apple made a really brilliant decision to put in the A13, they kind of made a head scratcher and they included a sub 2000 milliamp hour battery in that phone. And obviously it's not driving, you know, high pixel OLED display, it's a low resolution LCD, but it still is clearly not a battery king. And the phone feels so light in the hand I would not have minded a few millimeters extra thickness to have a bigger battery in there. You could expect a phone to last longer than the iPhone SE does. And if your big determining factor is what's going to get you easily through a day or a day and a half, it does make it tough to recommend the iPhone SE if you're not near a charger. If you compare it to the Battery King, the iPhone Pro Max, which is very easily a day and a half, then you start to see a difference. But again, at the top end of over $1,000 difference, very easily just buy a battery pack and take it with you. So obviously the world we are in right now is very different than how it was a few months ago. And I can only speak from my experience, but I'm still fortunate enough to be working, but how I've had to work has drastically changed. It used to be when I filmed, I would have editors and we could all film together and be collaborative. Those days are unfortunately gone and don't appear to be coming back for a while. In order to keep my business running, we've actually been using Monday. And what they do is really cool. We're using Monday for video, but it works across pretty much any industry. It's a way to sort of plan and organize a workflow. So for us, we can assign videos out to editors, we can assign topics, I can go back and see what stages the video is in. It's been an incredibly invaluable tool to keeping my business running. So for us, we use a lot of the shareable features. It's totally collaborative. It'll sync with all of our calendars and it's very easy to see what everybody in the team is doing. There's a Monday app for pretty much everything. If you're looking for a software that can help organize your business and make your ideas, even if it's just you, easier, I could not recommend monday.com enough. If you want to learn more, check out monday.com for yourself. And I think you should hit the link down below. They're giving away free 30 days. And again, to give a big shout out and thank you to monday.com, we want to give you a chance to win a phone that you can use for your monday.com app. 128 gigabyte iPhone SE fully unlocked in whatever color you want. It's open to anyone in the world. We'll run it for two weeks. We always appreciate a like on the video and hit the subscribe button, but I'll include a link down below on ways you can actually enter to win the phone for yourself. So for a lot of people, having Touch ID is a giant deal. And this is the most modern version of a iPhone you're gonna get with Touch ID. And I'll even say it's probably the last generation of Touch ID that we will ever see. But in a world now where we are wearing masks and I have to put in a pin anyway to unlock my phone, having Touch ID is really nice to have. So screen on the iPhone SD is one area where Apple clearly was looking to save money. And I think this question really begs to what phone are you coming from? Are you upgrading from? 
you're coming from an LCD phone where maybe you've never used OLED, you're not coming from an Android phone with a really high refresh rate, you'd be hard pressed to find much of a difference with the iPhone SE and it's about 720p-ish resolution. Now Apple does LCD displays really well. We've seen it with the 10R, we've seen it in the iPhone 11. These are very capable panels and the resolution alone doesn't tell the whole story. Colors still look plenty bright, black still look plenty black. There's a ton of brightness when you go outdoors. They look really good. You don't have any sort of pixelation when you look at text. Apple does, again, an amazing job with their LCDs. But even the best LCD display, when you compare it to a really good OLED panel, you can clearly see a difference. And that's what the iPhone 11 Pro is. It's a really good OLED display. And despite it starting to show its age compared to its newer Android counterparts, when it comes to resolution and refresh rates, it is incredibly capable. You've got obviously really dark blacks because the pixels are off. The colors are bright and vibrant. Apple did a great job with outdoor visibility. Screen is an area where I could see why someone would want to spend that six, seven hundred dollars all the way up to a thousand dollars for the phone. You're looking at the screen doing everything. It's what you're looking at for texts, emails, pictures, anything your phone can do, you are looking at the screen. So for me, that's an area where I would choose to spend the money. I'll always go for the best screen that I can afford. And that's gonna be a determination for you. What's the best screen that you can afford? If that price of the Pro is, is in your budget, you're going to get a much better viewing experience than you will on the SE. If you don't wanna spend that money, you're still getting a very capable, really good screen. And chances are, if you don't have both phones side by side all the time, you don't notice much of a difference once you get the iPhone SE home in your pocket and just generally start using it. Design is subjective, right? How beautiful a phone could be if you even care about the looks of a device. The iPhone SE, to my eye, is not a beautiful phone. It's the same design we saw that came out in 2014, essentially with the iPhone 6. There's been some small updates, but for the most part, the phone looks just as phones did about six years ago. You got big bezels on top, big bezels on bottom. You've got that touch ID button there. You switch over to the design of the iPhone 11 Pro. That's also starting to show its age. It's continuing the design language we saw a few years ago with the iPhone 10, but objectively that phone still looks more modern despite its very large notch up top. Now we should see things change with the iPhone 12, but we're certainly getting a more modern looking phone on the iPhone 11 Pro. Build quality materials are a bit different. Both phones feel good. You have a bit of more weight with the Pro than the Pro Max with the bigger battery and certainly feels way lighter on the SE side. It almost feels like there's no battery in there. But both phones, at least to my hand and touch, still feel premium. So there obviously a lot of intangibles with both phones, things that don't fit in their own categories. Things like IP rating, it's IP67 on the SE and IP68 on the iPhone 11 Pro and Pro Max. Both phones can do wireless charging. You've got differences with speeds for fast charging, Apple Pay and the whole Apple ecosystem in each. But there are some hardware differences too. The iPhone 11 Pro and Pro Max have the U1 chip, which for right now is really useful for kind of directional airdrop. You can point your phone at the person and it'll show up there. Not a giant earth shattering thing. And chances are, if you have one of those new phones, you're probably not using it that much. And if you believe the Apple rumors that Apple's got their tile competitor with AirTags coming, that U1 chip could play a really important role in how those accessories get used. Perhaps not a deal breaker, but something to at least consider. So the big question, the 700 to thousand dollar question, which phone should you get? And I think it really boils down to screen and cameras and how much you care about those things. If you're coming from a phone that only has one camera, you don't really care that much about having the extra options of an ultra wide and telephoto, you're gonna get amazing photos from the iPhone SE. If you don't care about screen, then again, the iPhone SE is a great way to go. I am a display snob. 
I've said it in many videos that I prefer the best display available. But right now, I'm not sure that display is worth $700 difference. I'm not getting a crazy high resolution. I'm not getting really any high refresh rate. It's hard to justify that cost for display. It's missing out on those things that current generation flagship Androids have that should supposedly come with the iPhone 12 Pro line. I wish the iPhone SE had better battery life, but for that price savings, I'm happy to carry a battery pack around with me. I wish it had other things like maybe a more modern design, but for that price point, I can accept it. For right now, as of this filming of the video in June 2020, the iPhone SE seems like not only an incredible way to go, you're getting an incredible value, a capable phone that'll last you for years, one that's really no slouch in the photo or video department. So whether or not you wanna spend that money right now, that's a you decision. But if you're gonna let me make the decision for you, save your cash and go for the iPhone SE.